Our next um, speaker is Jules Carey. And Jules has been a stalwart from the start. He's been at every um, COPS meeting just about that we've had. Um, he's a partner at um, Byman's Solicitors and um, is representing a number of the core participants at the public inquiry, which range from the parents <laughs> of children who the undercover police stole the names of and the identities of, which is another terrible, terrible, terrible scandal. Um, and he uh, is also representing some of the women and political activists. And Jules is going to talk a little bit about some of the legal stuff that's gone on in the public inquiry. Thank you. Um, um, I represent, um, as Lois said, um, a number of people uh, affected and harmed by undercover police officers. I represent them at the inquiry. Uh, in civil courts and civil proceedings that um, have been going on for four years in some cases. The clients I'm representing at the moment um, are trade unionists, <coughs> relatives of deceased children, uh, individuals who, uh, like Kate, were duped into relationships with undercover police officers, political activists and politicians. There are others, other groups who um, are represented at the inquiry and um, they will include justice uh, campaigns and also victims of miscarriages of justice. So just from that, you'll see, you'll just have an immediate, um, an immediate insight into the breadth of groups and of people uh, who've been harmed by these undercover operations. The first details um, came out about these undercover police officers in about 2011. And um, it was then that we heard uh, for the first time about Mark Kennedy and um, the sexual relationships that these undercover officers uh, were having with women. There was a desperate need, um, it would seem, by the establishment um, to set up as many inquiries and investigations, internal and external, as possible, uh, and get all these matters kicked into the long grass. At one point, there was about 15 uh, separate investigations and in inquiries. <coughs> there have been big, big victories in court. You know, th there has been that apology that was wrung out of the police by a very brave fight, and you know there was Kate's victory the other day. But um, at the same time, um, there isn't a consistent approach by the police. Um, apologies are contingent uh, to a large extent on whether or not um, the officers involved um, are able to rely on NCND, not to confirm, not deny. Um, we didn't win um, our case in the Court of Appeal. Uh, when I say we, I mean a number of us from different firms and um, a group of uh, uh, mainly women. Uh, we were challenging the ability of the police to authorise uh, the use of sexual relationships um, as a means of investigation. We lost that fight. We lost that fight, which means that under the Regulation of Investigatory Powers Act, it's still possible for a senior officer to authorise an undercover officer to use sexual relations in the course of their investigations and inquiries. Uh, the only way of changing that uh, is not through the court, it's by continuing to campaign and changing the legislation. Um, and, and, and so, you know, that is a very real campaign that needs, need, need, that, that we are needed here today to, to uh, continue. Anyway, what we did get after five years of little change and very little truth <coughs> Uh, and after a lot of campaigning, is the public inquiry. It got announced by Theresa May in um, March 2014, and in July 2015, there was the publication of the Terms of Reference. I have a very short summary of the Terms of Reference, so I'll read it out. Um, it, the, the purpose of the public inquiry is to review policies uh, in the use of undercover policing, establishing justice for victims and families, and making recommendations for future operations and police powers. Well, there is, um, to even a casual reader, a very obvious mistake straight there in the summary of the terms of reference, because the one thing that we won't get out of the public inquiry is justice. Um, it's not designed for justice. What it's designed for is truth. And I think, um, I, I think what we need to try and do over the next three years is everything that we can to ensure that we get the most truth out of that public inquiry so that in different tribunals and in different forums after the public inquiry, 
there is at least the opportunity of seeking justice. The scope of the inquiry, it's limited. Um, well, I say limited, it, it goes back to 1968, but at the moment um, it's limited to um, England and Wales. But there is a big campaign, obviously, um, to spread it to Scotland and also to look at the use of undercover police officers in other countries. It's only supposed to last for three years, <coughs> although even though it hasn't started properly, it's already running late. What the inquiry can't do is it can't um, express a view on whether the conduct of a police officer is a criminal offence. The inquiry can't state whether um, a prosecution and a conviction constitutes a miscarriage of justice. And the inquiry can't say whether or not an action by a police officer uh, constitutes uh, whether the officer has any civil or criminal liability as a result of that action. First part is looking at all the evidence, taking oral evidence, looking at documents. The second bit is looking at institutions, um, the supervision and the integrity of those institutions. And the third part is supposed to be drawing together uh, lessons and recommendations from the full inquiry. So it breaks down into three parts. This inquiry so far is about 16 police officers and there is this breadth of damage there is this breadth of damage. The calls that there are um, for all the cover names to be released so that this can be a robust inquiry um, make perfect sense. I think, it, um, I think we should all be behind the call for the cover names to be released and for the files of all call participants to be released so that we can ensure that this inquiry is as robust as possible because we know that at the moment it's dealing with not more than 10% of the total number of undercover police officers. And so if you multiply the damage caused by those 10% to the damage that's probably caused by 150 to 200 police officers, well, it's, it's just mind-boggling.